Hi everyone, our subject today is the chronic abdominal pain or recurrent abdominal pain in pediatric. Chronic or recurrent abdominal pain is defined as a present for more than two months and can be either organic or more frequently part of a functional gastrointestinal disorder based on specific diagnostic criteria ROM3. How to approach the child with the chronic or recurrent abdominal pain after performing history and physical examination? Is there sign and symptom suggestive of constipation? If it is yes, then it is constipation. It will be discussed in another lecture. If it is no, consider urine analysis, complete blood count, ESR, ALT, MLAs, lipase, is there sign or symptom suggestive of organic etiology present? If it is no, it is differential diagnosis, functional abdominal pain, functional dyspepsia. If it is yes, then differential diagnosis is, uh, is it aggravate, aggravated or uh, relieved by eating? Consider MLAs, lipase, ultrasound, CT, UGI, uh, upper uh, GI contrast, uh, small bowel follow through, endoscopy, differential diagnosis, GER, esophagitis, peptic ulcer disease, functional dyspepsia, a chronic pancreatitis. Is there weight loss with or without diarrhea? Consider complete blood count, ESR, C-reactive protein, albumin, tissue transglutaminase, stool for occult blood, Calprotectin, KUP, upper GI uh, contrast uh, and uh, small uh, bowel follow through, endoscopy, differential diagnosis, inflammatory bowel disease, neoplasm, eosinophilic gastroenteritis, celiac disease. Uh, continue. Uh, distension is there, distension. Lose stool, diarrhea, consider complete blood count, ESR, C reactive protein, tissue transglutaminase, stool study for ova and parasite, giardia and cryptosporidium, uh, antigen, occult uh, blood, calprotectin, stool culture, ultrasound, CT, upper GI contrast, small bowel follow through, colonoscopy, MRI, enterography, endoscope. Differential diagnosis, inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, lactose intolerance, celiac disease, parasite, giardia, cryptosporidium, yersinia, and other bacteria, amebiasis, celia, C. difficile. Is it associated with menstrual cycle? It is a differential diagnosis, dysmenorrhea, uh, metzikleris uh, hematocolbus, endometriosis. Is it non-specific sign and symptom? Consider complete blood count, ESR, C-react protein, MLAs, lipase, liver function test, KUP, ultrasound, CT, MRI, upper GI contrast, small bowel follow through, endoscopy. Differential diagnosis may include constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, eosinophilic esophagitis, Peptic ulcer disease, ovarian mass, malrotation with intermittent valvulus, hydronephrosis, urethropelvic junction obstruction, chronic pancreatitis, Michels diverticulum, abdominal migraine, abdominal epilepsy, lead poisoning, parasites, giardia, chronic hepatitis, hepatobiliary or pancreatic disorder, familial Mediterranean fever, nephrolithiasis, porphyria, hereditary angioedema, neoplasm, trauma, tumor, infection of the vertebra. Recommended investigation in chronic or recurrent pain. Urine analysis, hematuria suggest renal stone, leukocytes and nitrate suggest UTI. A stool for parasite and culture, secrine, test for H. pylori, Stool uh, calprotectin to differentiate between inflammatory bowel disease and irritable bowel syndrome. 
full blood count with the C-reactive protein, use what suggested inflammation and infection, anemia in uh, sickle cell anemia, liver function test to diagnose hepatitis, Gilbert syndrome, celiac screen test, abdominal ultrasound scan to confirm renal or gallbladder stone and tumors. Alert. H. pylori test is not indicated in the evaluation of the chronic abdominal pain, non-ulcer dyspepsia, or a newly diagnosed GERD unless the patient has endoscopically documented peptic ulcer disease, family history of gastric cancer, documented mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue lymphoma, MALT, or unexplained iron deficiency anemia. Top tips, recurrent or chronic pain. The closer the pain to the umbilicus, the less likely it is to be significant. Pain away from the umbilicus is suggestive of organic causes. Children of parents with the GI disease, children with the stress, and children with obesity or previous abdominal surgery are more likely to have recurrent abdominal pain. Functional abdominal disease are suggested by symptoms free interval, the healthy appearance of the child and the an absence of abnormality on examination. Organic disease tend to have a progressive course and the presence of abnormalities on examination. The pain that is followed not preceded by vomiting is suggestive of appendicitis. Infant colic is defined as irritability, paroxysm with the fuzziness or crying that start and end without clear reason, lasting at least three hours per day, three days per week for at least three weeks in a healthy baby. Irritable bowel syndrome accounts for the majority of pediatric recurrent abdominal pain and is due to dysregulation of the visceral and neural pathway leading to visceral hyperalgesia. Infection or stress may trigger this sensation. Clinical presentation of irritable bowel disease often overlap with the irritable bowel syndrome sorry inflammatory bowel disease often overlap with the irritable bowel syndrome A stool caloprotectin has proved to be very useful in differentiate differential diagnosis between inflammatory bowel disease and irritable bowel syndrome low caloprotectin make inflammatory bowel disease unlikely Pain in constipation is often overrated as a diagnostic entity. It should not be considered simply because no other cause except constipation is elicited from the history and examination. Note that food intolerance allergy is among the most common causes of recurrent abdominal pain in an otherwise healthy child. Eliminating the suspected food item, particularly milk or wheat, for about two weeks is the best diagnostic and therapeutic tools. A blood or a skin test is of limited value. Psychogenic causes should be diagnosed on positive grounds, not by excluding organic disease. Parents should not hear the cause is psychological. They should be supported by being offered reassurance that their child is healthy and the abdominal pain will not affect his or her well-being. Red flags, recurrent abdominal pain or chronic abdominal pain. A child known to have recurrent functional abdominal pain could present one day with an organic cause, which may need surgical intervention. Alarm features that suggest organic causes include children younger than four years of age, weight loss, falling off growth centile, persistent pain in the right or left upper or right lower quadrant of the abdomen, or in the suprapubic area, 
or associated with vomiting, persistent diarrhea, or fever. Other alarm features include a family history of inflammatory bowel disease, pain associated with dysphagia or heart, heart pain, or with night walking, oral and or perianal lesion, or arthritis that suggests non-functional causes of abdominal pain. Remember that the frequency of uh, recurrent abdominal pain and the duration of symptoms are often longer in children who were victims of sexual abuse. abuse. If such uh, a case is suspected, the child should be protected in a hospital environment until the diagnosis is conclusively made. Thank you for your listening.